Come on, come on. Okay, 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 okay. Here's the thing, guys. In a few hours, we're about to surpass 90k, which puts us on the final round to hit 100k on the channel, which is awesome. And on top of that, we have a new trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which was announced today. Well, technically yesterday with the wallpaper, but the trailer came out today. If you're new here, the Filmmaker React series, we take a cool dive into the cinematics and filmmaking background of making some of these trailers, where in part one, I react to them, and in part two, we dive in to have an awesome discussion about the techniques used, as well as some visual effects that we can pull from them. My job is to be freelance filmmaker, whether it is working on commercial projects or novelty projects here on YouTube, as well as making a ton of tutorials, teaching you guys how to pull some of those awesome things on. I will have some links in the description, guys, so check those out. But with that said, I can't wait anymore, so let's just dive into it. So I've pulled it up, I haven't seen a single frame. One, two, three. They are heartless. Nice. Godless barbarians. There's definitely gonna be ships. They murder and kill blindly. Nice. They scar the lands of England. What? Lands they will never defend. Never love. The time has come to speak to them in a language they understand. They will understand. Damn. Bad guy. I'm guessing you're taking the side of the Vikings. Let's go, boys! Storm coming. There we go. There we go. Come on, come on. Yes. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, available holiday twenty twenty.
Damn! Is there anything at the end? Xbox? Oh man! I wonder who the figure in under the tree was. Obviously an assassin. Maybe his master? Who knows? Oh my god, man. That was so epic. The visuals, I mean, the lighting situations that they chose on the battlefield is like spot on. It kind of reminded me um, some Ghost of Tsushima more recent like trails where you have the amazing sunset and the sky is basically divided into two parts the sunny gold hour of sunset as well as the storm and the grayness and the darkness let me know guys what part was your favorite one i'll let you guys know after the i'll go through it again and we dissect it and talk about the filmmaking stuff and by the end because i'm gonna see it a second time while we talk about it i'm gonna let you know my favorite scene but let me know which favorite scene is yours guys and of course any recommendations about what cinematic trailer we should react next or the next filmmaker reacts episode okay guys so with that said we're ready to dive in and have our analysis so the first thing i want to know is how they bleed in the scene so let's go we have our logo let's go full screen they are heartless Interesting. In comparison to other cinematic trailers we've seen, they're actually doing two things simultaneously. Sometimes you can let the audience know what's coming by bleeding in the sound first, but, he but here they bring in the sound together with the image in a very gradual fade, as well as a sound wave as well. So we are introduced to the nature and the kind of like where our, this game is going to take place, which is the awesome snow mountain mountains and the village and by fading in and fading out you just give the audience information in glimpses instead of having a natural progression of time like a character is moving we cut to him being in the front we cut to what he sees etc by fading in and out you give the character glimpses and it's very nice to use with some voiceover they are heartless a star comparison, I, I kind of got this when we were watching it, that the guy that's speaking is obviously not a Viking and he speaks about the Vikings, but we can see where he says heartless and things like that, or that we can see them with children running around, being happy, uh, working on their village, hunting and things like that. Man, how amazing is the scene with the... Uh, the Northern Lights, damn. You can definitely do this within After Effects. If we talk about VFX, you would basically do a sky replacement. You can either do this by having a cool green screen and shooting in the studio, or if you shoot a bit more during the day, but it has to be overcast, otherwise the sun's gonna cast a ton of shadows. If you shoot when it's overcast and the clouds make everything soft, then in certain scenes you can make a sky replacement and do it make it look like night and basically compose them in using sky replacement effects. Godless barbarians. Blood. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys got some God of War vibes when you were watching the trailer. I, I'm wondering how much the success of God of War 4 based on Norse mythology with Kratos affected the making of this game, of decisions like the axe, certain moves, the mythology and things like that. One of my friends, by the way, he's a massive fan of Norse mythology. You guys maybe know him, he's Avi um, from the God of War short film that we made with him. I will have the link in the description. And he's the one that actually texted me. He's, he says, new trailer, Assassin's Creed run we need a reaction i was like heck yeah oh man look how beautiful i'll have to go back there so now we're introduced to kind of through voiceover but they've done it extremely smart it's not just they're not just dumping exposition directly to you because as we saw the guy from england is basically speaking to his underlings basically while he's making a signature 
paper thing that he's going to pass that basically is going to say we're going to war with them because they're evil. Um, the way they're throwing the information at us is by having the character speak as while he makes the action of like, you know, putting in the new things basically. And that way, when it cuts to him being real time and doing the rest of the things, it's way more cinematic than someone just talking to us directly. So they're going, traveling. So since their village was snowy and this one is more green, I'm guessing now it takes place to England and they're letting us know based on the terrain what's happening. They murder and kill blindly. That is really interesting. You see, when he says that, and they're obviously in a British uh, village here. They don't kill the children, but that's what he says because it's kind of like propaganda. That's what guys, were, when they rule and they want to do things, they use things like that to get the point across. See, let them go. They scar the lands of England, lands they will never defend. Never love. I'm interested because I don't know much about the story of the Vikings. I wonder who uh, took first blood. Did the Vikings came to England to basically take some land or did the English do it first? And then they were like back and forth. But um, again, while he speaks, we see a stark contrast. This is the village that they took. You can see the other kids that were there playing with them while they're setting up their Never gods, loved. statues, and things like that. The time. Ha now we cut to real time. So as we're watching this past minute, now we know that this guy was talking all along and he's talking to someone because he wants to do something. Has come to speak to them in a language they will understand. I do want to talk about a bit about cinematography so far because they have some awesome shots. The way you create such cinematic images is one, by setting up lights that are not actually real, and two, by playing with color grading. As you can see, we have an amazing value of like blues coming from the supposed window up there, as well as the candle lights bringing in warm light. This star contrast of blue and warm create a very dynamic image in terms of color, and that's what evokes a sense of cinema, if that makes any sense. If this was real life, even though, I mean, it's very interesting because the way you do CGI trailers is one, you record motion of actors and then you set up CGI lights and CGI cameras to move through space. It's basically as if you have, you've set up in a computer the entire room and then you have full control of where you want to set up digital lights, where you're going to move the digital camera through, and things like that. Now, another thing... In a language, they will understand. When you have a very specific motion that weights a lot of power, for example, him signing this new law, whatever this is, it's always cool to cut to a close-up of that action to magnify its effect. For example, they do it in two cuts. One, as he burns the wax to warm it up and put the seal in. And once the seal is on, and boom. I mean, that almost looks photo real. It looks so good. See, it says war and we have the seal. And the, if this was real life, actually, and you would edit this to color grade it, you would put a ton of vignetting to focus the image here. So everything that you guys see in videos, in cinema, is heavily, heavily image processed. Never an image is raw, if that makes any sense. So if I would edit this to make it look like this, we would have a very wonderful image from the camera, but I would use a ton of vignette on the edges to maximize the direction of the light and create a great contrast between the light in the dark. This is a great thing. Oh man! Yeah. Epic. Some stylistic things to notice. Um, even though fire arrows are a source of light, stylistically they enhanced how bright that light would be, and they create yeah. again. If I should, we see a very huge glow 
coming in from the arrows. Now, usually the arrows will not cast this much light, no matter how many arrow flames uh, they are. But to be fair, because they've set up a fog, a foggy scene here, a fog diffuses light. And actually, if you guys know um, from photography or video lights, it's something called a softbox. And it's what I'm using right now to have all this nice, very soft light with no harsh shadows. The way you create soft light is by diffusing it, either with a white sheet or a white cloth, basically. And it's doing the same effect as what fog would do. Basically, sometimes you guys have seen it in many music videos, they have this fog and it creates that very nice, like almost game-like volumetric light diffusion. So here, since our beach area is completely foggy, and the light from the arrows comes in, it would, it would actually diffuse like this. I just think it's a stylistic choice to have this much brightness because you can see the bright and the dark. Again, things to keep in mind, the contrast between colors, you usually play with opposites like blue, red, cyan, kind of teal with orangey, things like that. And you create one, contrast with color, and then two, contrast between the shadows and the highlights of an image. When an image is flat, it's not very appealing. You don't really get a sense of dimension. When an image is shot in a way to maximize the scene, the contrast and everything, then it's very interesting to the eye. And once you image process it in an editing software, then it comes to like maximum potential. The particles are really cool as well. Nice. So now that we are during the fight scene, we have very violent cuts when either an axe hits or someone's head is chopped off. They don't show a lot of gore, but they do show violence, which is super cool. And I was wrong. I think it's sunrise. It's not sunset. So it's really early in the morning and the sun probably rises. <laughs> okay, this is amazing, by the way. So if you notice, when something has a very dynamic movement in front of the lens, it's really cool to also move and change the way you move the camera to be more dynamic. You don't need to do shaky cam, but when you, instead of having the camera perfectly fly through space as if it was in a gimbal, it would be really cool to have some power to manipulate the camera based on what moves happen. Let's say when the guy gets hit with a spear, you could move the camera together with the spear. And that to the viewer is gonna make the, the scene so much more impactful because the camera will go with it. Let's say the spear goes like this and hits, the camera go poof, That would be real cool. You kind of see it here. Do you see how the whole camera moved like this with the body, but then you have the follow movement of the sword so you can't go all the way, so then the camera follows the movement of the sword and goes back up. You can technically only do this either handheld with a lot of weights to stabilize or with a stabilizer that is weight-based, not motor-based. So if it's weight-based, it will smooth everything, but you have very neat control of how and where the camera is gonna look. And of course, the cut to action. This is a very cool trick, always cut to connect the two scenes between an act within the frame. When the axe reaches here, you cut to the scene in the front and you really show for a very few frames the, Im the image and then you cut that way because then the two images are linked by the action that happens in them. I do want to talk about story as well, a very stark contrast. Oh man. A very stark contrast between the fighting styles of the two teams is that in one, the leader fights, he's dead center on the fight, while in the opposition, the guy and his lieutenants, whatever, they're just on top of horses, looking from top of the hill, being safe and everything like that. So that's interesting to see as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, every time I see an axe throw, I remember 
uh, Kratos doing this, they bring the Leviathan X back. There is actually a tutorial on how to do this within After Effects of how to summon any form of weapon that you want back to you and it's super easy to do. Let's not talk about the ending of Game of Thrones, but um, this reminds me of the mountain just sh bringing the biggest guy, the most powerful guy in the fight and just having him wreak havoc or whatever. He's like, that's not gonna pass. The eagle, man. I love the eagle sound effect. Duel! Did you see? Oh my god, this is so, this is so cool. I get so nerdy about those things. Look at how they move the camera. Even though this is GI, you can do this in real life as well. You just have to really, really plan for it. Look how the camera is gonna move based on the movement of his sword. Ready? They also put the thunderstruck on the hit. And now this is... I don't know what to say, honestly, this is just a painting. Not this specific ring, but the way they set up the atmosphere. The sun is indeed rising, and we have the light obscured by the guy, and it's so cool. Because we have the light on one side, the darkness on the other with the storm. And the fight in between. Nice. Very good use of slow motion here, actually. Like when it, when it gets, when a fight gets to a dramatic point where either usually our good guy that we follow is losing, that's always usually how a fight goes, like they're, they're throwing punches and at some point the main character is like very tired and it's just like, looks like he's gonna lose but we know something is gonna come up and he's not gonna lose. On those instances, when a hit happens, in order to maximize like the pain and the struggle, it's, a, it's cool to use slow motion because you extend the scene and the impact and it just makes it way more dramatic. Don't overdo it though. I like how everyone is gathered around as if they're the pinnacle of the fight, which they are. But if I was on a battlefield, I don't think I would have much time to stand around and watch two guys fight, but it's really cool. When the bad guy is about to kill the main character, you always hear a sound, whether it is a gunshot and they both and the, but the camera always looks at them. You don't look at the wound of who did the act themselves. You just hear the sound effect. As here, we hear something getting sliced. And we know the bad guy has the sword on our character's neck. But as it's usual, the guy that gets cut is not our guy. But it, what I'm trying to say is they cut away from actually showing anything visually. But the sound is what keeps the motion and the story going, and then the reveal comes with the image. And we have our Blade of Assassins, cause no game should be without it. Oh! Oh! Big! What is so good? Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I wish the, the final scene was something else, I don't know, I mean it looks really epic, the guy just looking up to the guys and be like, yep, you're in deep, man, you know, I know that I'm rumbling, but how cool would it be if there was a mission and you would go in a forest to hunt something and somehow little Atreus or Kratos would come across you and you would just exchange something and then they would go if Ubisoft could make a deal with Santa Monica Studios to have Kratos in for like a scene that would be really funny so that was it guys really excited about the game let me know guys what your favorite scene was as well as which cinematic trailer to do next my favorite scene would have to be let me see where was it oh. 
I think it's the arrows. Like, I just love the fact that they're foggy and then the light comes from the arrows and you see the arrow rain upon them. And they're just, the main guys like, cool, shields, whatever, another day, mate. Uh, also, the fight with the last guy is top as well because you have the sunrise and the storm happening. Man, so, so freaking cool. Okay, guys, that was the Filmmaker React episode on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You guys told me that you would like me to do a lot more Assassin's Creed trailers, so those will come along. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you check the rest of Filmmaker Reacts as well as tuning in for the next episode. And I'll catch you guys then. Until then, stay awesome and creative.